So, yeah, so you, I, I'm presenting on one of two MSC projects that I just started. Um, two MSCs. So this one is by Emma Nietling. Um, so uh, um, she's going to look at the, um, uh, the impact of the polyphagous shuttle borer um, on the city's um, fruit, fruit tree um, orchards in South Africa. So I just don't want to find the button again here before I... Um, so, on this, so as I said in the second project, on this one we're going to look at the impact of the beetle um, on trees and where do they come from. So it seems like um, if they don't breed in the orchards themselves, um, where do they come from, what um, trees and what hosts do they have next to these orchards, and that's constantly feeding individuals into the, these orchards, which have a huge um, management um, component to it, especially if those trees are windbreak trees. So these beetles um, can also breed in a lot of the windbreak trees. Um, so the problem is PSHB is this little beetle all the way from Southeast Asia, got into South Africa, a whole bunch of countries actually, and it has a huge host range. And together with its fungus, it can kill quite a large number of trees. In South Africa, we found them in about 117 different tree species. Many of these are deciduous fruit trees, um, but most of these that we've seen them on are in garden settings. So these trees are generally not happy. Um, and the biggest issue we're facing since last year is that for the first time in the world, these beetles have started going into deciduous fruit orchards, notably pears and prunes, um, and also the rootstocks um, of these. Um, so the project focus, I can't really read it on this side, is looking at, we're going to look at the physiological response of these trees. So this is the really very early stages on the infestations on the trees. So we can't really see immediate effects on a tree. A tree ha takes a long time to actually react to any disease or any p um, pest. So we want to see on the physiological level what are the trees doing. Um, we want to see, as I mentioned, the, the sources of these beetles coming into these orchards. What are they breeding? We know where they're coming from the urban areas, but in, in farmland areas there's different hosts. Um, and we want to look at the idea of using remote sensing to help us trace these beetles as they move throughout the landscape. Um, so in terms of the sources of the infestation in the orchards, um, we're going to survey surrounding vegetation around orchards, also um, evaluate the numbers of holes in trees or levels of attack in trees in the orchards um, and see if you can correlate what's next to the orchards to what's inside the orchards and then quantify the actual main problem hosts on the outside of the orchards. Infestations on the inside of the orchards, we're going to look at if, whether these beetles can actually breed in these trees. Um, we've seen them breeding in all of these species in urban settings. Um, we don't know um, the full extent of what they can do in an orchard setting. Um, we've seen them breeding in one or two of these hosts, and that's when there's really problems, when the orchard actually becomes the source as well. Um, and then the activity periods, we want to see the, the monthly activity periods, but also the daily activity periods of these beetles. When do they fly, so that you can know um, when is the best time to, to manage them. Then also looking at the impact of these, these beetles, looking at what they do in terms of the physiology, tree physiology, um, so if you want to know what's going to happen to an orchard, the best place to start is to look at these individual trees. Uh, where are we now? So one of the ways, we're going to try and do that in two ways. One of the ways is going to, uh, while well, we were approached by a company, Vian, this is something new that we haven't discussed, <laughs> um, that actually has really good technology, um, good sensors, good cameras, and they have generously offered to do this for free. So we're going to fly drones through some of these orchards and we're going to monitor the reflectance of the plants, but we can also see when different things happen on these trees, when's flowering, when's leafing, how yellow the leaves are, and we can re relate that back to ground truth data to see if there's uh, some correlation with the number of attacks on a tree and these parameters. And this relates back to plant stress, water stress parameters, the photosynthetic stress that we can measure, um, and also then the phenology. So all of this, we also ground truth, so it's a whole bunch of uh, physiological parameters that we're actually measuring in these trees, from control trees to trees that are highly, um, sort of high numbers of attack on these trees, and we want to see what happens to a tree. Um, is there a specific stage of attack where these trees are most vulnerable? So we started doing this, and we had a really quick stab of it, uh, of it just before the project started on a pear orchard. 
um, and only a few of these parameters. So what we've seen in this very short time is there's effects on the fruit maturation. So the beet trees that are attacked seem to ripen um, quicker. So they turn yellow quicker and they also change the sugars into starches much quicker. And also these plants start um, using a lot of water. They keep their stomata open. So they're pumping water into the air, um, which if it's a dry land system is a really big issue. But also if, if the air temperatures get really dry, these plants are going to exhaust um, the water availability um, to them. So this is preliminary what we're seeing, so don't quote me on any of that. Um, that's what the stat says, but we might have missed something um, at this stage. Um, yeah, so watch the space. Thank you. <laughs>